Hello, my name is Stiley Hayward. I would like to welcome you to the Blessed Hope Ministry. We are a King James grounded family Bible study. These lessons are not to be a substitute for regular church attendance. Nightly I direct my family through the Bible by chapter and verse. We request you to join us and to study from God and His Son Jesus Christ. You may have permission to like, send, or encourage our studies with family or friends. Edification of what God has and what He desires in our life. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. You may use our studies, but I request that you do not abuse them. For YouTube videos, subscribe below for more videos. And place the thumbs up and leave a comment or email me. Thank you. Exodus chapter 11. And the Lord said unto Moses, Yet will I bring one plague more upon Pharaoh and upon Egypt. Afterwards he will let you go hence. When he shall let, when he shall let you go, he shall sur surely thrust you out hence altogether. He's getting rid of you this time. There's no game playing this time. Speak now in the ears of all the people. Let every man borrow of his neighbor, every woman of her neighbor, jewels of silver and jewels of gold. Second Chronicles 12, 9. Second Chronicles 12, 9. said borrow and that's exactly what God meant I'm in first Chronicles second Chronicles 12 9 and the Bible says so Shishak king of Egypt came up against Jerusalem and took away the treasures of the house of the Lord the temple and the treasures of the king's house he took all he carried away also the shoes of gold which Solomon had made that's the payment back as when Egypt came he said borrow second Chronicles 12 9 is when they give it back now this Jewels of silver and gold. They're going to be used for the temple. A free will offering. They can give it or they don't have to give it. They're given an abundance we'll record later. So where did they get the materials to build the, the, the tabernacle? Here it is. God gave them grace and mercy in the eyes of the Egyptians. And the Lord gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. Moreover, the man Moses was very great in the land of Egypt. What? Wait a minute, what? Moreover, the man Moses was very great in the land of Egypt. That's kind of interesting because if I can remember back going to school, one of the two things history always taught you was about Indians and Egyptians. And if Moses was very great among the Egyptians, why on earth in the public school system do you not ever hear about Moses? How about Joseph? Joseph was the second leader, ruler of all the entire nation. He saved Egypt from seven years famine. And yet Joseph and Moses are not mentioned in the public school system. Of this great Christian nation. Really? You do know they're mentioned Allah. Muhammad. In the public school system. It was very great in the land of Egypt. In the sight of Pharaoh's servants. And in the sight of the people. The royalty. The government. And the people. 
And I think it was 7 1 that we read that in the eyes of Pharaoh, God, Moses is a God, and Pharaoh, uh, Aaron is his prophet. And Moses said, Thus saith the Lord about midnight, Will I, God, go out of the midst of Egypt? All the firstborn in the land of Egypt shall die. There's been animals, there's been lice, there's been boils, pestilence, been the crops. Now death to the firstborn. God's serious. And all the firstborn in the land of Egypt shall die from the firstborn of Pharaoh. Gonna hit him personally. That sitteth on his throne, even the firstborn of the maidservant that is behind the mill, working, slavery, employee, baker, and they're making flour, and all the firstborn of beasts. And it kind of gets you because it seems like that this grinding of a mill is a job that ill who wants to do it because when they captured Samson and put his eyes out they made him to grind usually an animal would do it and all the firstborn of beasts well, you say then all the animals die well these are the, the children the babies of the animals they might have got animals from other places. Might have stolen from Israel. The ones that were brought indoors. Man and beast are going to die. This is the same message we carry to the world today. You're going to de death is coming. Here they know. They know it's the first. It's not going to be Pharaoh. It's going to be his firstborn son. The firstborn of the servants, the firstborn of the population. They know. There's no mistaking about. Guy goes in, in into his little box in, in his pyramid or whatever. He opens up the baby. Oh boy, I'm the firstborn. I don't care what age you are. I don't care what age you are. If that birth certificate says you were the, my birth certificate. Certificate says I was born of three children siblings. But I'm the third born. You the first born? There's no fighting over this now. And there there shall be a great cry throughout all the land of Egypt. You think this would be in the public school system? You would think that the public school system, a history teacher would get class, we're going to learn about Egypt this week. We're going to talk about the God that beat the Egyptian God's butts. Right? Because that's what God has done. He's, we've looked at him. We're going to look at one more God that God's going to attack. The Egyptians are without hope. Their, their gods have failed. They're God of physicians. They're God of the earth. They're God of the river. They're God of this. They're God of that. They failed. Including one important God of the community. Pharaoh himself. You think you're so big sitting in that, that oval office, the Kremlin, wherever. Stop these storms. Come on. Step out in front of Cuba and say, stop! You can't do nothing. Moses steps out and says, come on, bring it on, God. Bring it on. And we are 11 chapters. We're coming up to the last plague. 
Where'd you ever see anybody walk up to the Moses and Aaron and say, hey, listen, no, 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 no. We're going to kill you because you're not going before Pharaoh because we're not going to have no more problems after you meet with Pharaoh. Now, after the plagues come, Pharaoh goes, oh, I repent. Forgive me this sin, this one. Stop it and then stop. But who has prevented Moses and Aaron ever going to Pharaoh? No one. There shall be a great cry throughout all the land of Egypt, such as there was none like it, nor shall be like it any more. How many times have we heard that? You're going to see something. And you have never seen it before. And those are the same words that are spoken about the tribulation and the great tribulation period. You're not, you have never seen and will ever see the ruler such as the Antichrist and the beast will be ever. You will never see the events that's going to happen in the tribulation, great tribulation period that has ever happened yet. And yet if you study Exodus, the, the chapters that we have been studying, they have happened historically. Yes, they have not talking about the schools. And yet there are also some of them are prophetic to be what's going to happen in the tribulation. That darkness is going to happen in the great tribulation period just before Jesus comes. Those frogs. There's mentioned three frogs when it comes to the Antichrist, the false prophet, and the beast. The spirit that comes out of their mouth. God tangling with what the Antichrist is doing. The bowls, the trumpets, the seals, the woes. If there's one thing you can thank the Lord about your salvation is you're not going through the tribulation period. I don't know how anybody can be so idiot enough to think they're going to go through that. I mean, let me say it. But, but, you know there's some good buts in the Bible. This is a good but. If you're on the right side of God, there's some butts. Uh oh. Psalm 78 1. Psalm 78 1. Psalm 78 1. All these tags are. Be careful you buy tags for your Bible. This is the second set I have in the brewing in my Bible. 78 1. You'll find the Psalms. Many places about what's going on here. Psalm 78.1. What? 78.51. 48. And he gave up their cattle also to the hail and their flocks to hot thunderbolts. Ouch. He casts upon them fierceness of his anger, wrath, indignation, and trouble by sending evil angels among them. That's that God of love. He made a way to his anger. He spared not their soul from death, but gave their life over to the pestilence and smote all the firstborn in Egypt, the chief of their strength in the tabernacles of Ham. That's one of the boys of Noah in Africa. I'm going to leave it just like that because I don't know where color came from. But against any of the children of Israel shall not a dog move his tongue. See, what's that all about? Go ask Jezebel. Jezebel became dog poop when she died. The dogs ate and liquor and they went out in the field and relieved themselves. So you would have to watch out that you didn't step in Jezebel. No, dogs were dogs back then. They're not like our pets today. They would be used to get rid of body, blood, especially in wartime. They called the dog. These dogs. I'm trying to think of the word. It's just they run around in packs. They, they weren't friendly. Scavengers. Against man or beast. Remember, cats are worshipped by the Egyptians. Against man or beast. 
that ye may know how that the Lord does put a difference between the Egyptians and Israel. So here we go again. Not an Israelite is going to die on this last leg. Egyptians, you're out of luck. So the world will die, but not God's people. And all the, thy servants shall come down unto me, and bow down themselves unto me, saying, Get thee out. And all the people that follow thee, after that I will go out. And he went out from Pharaoh in great anger. Verse 28 of chapter 10. And Pharaoh said unto him, Get thee from me, take heed to thyself, see my face no more. For in that day thou seest my face, thou shalt die. And Moses said, Thou hast spoken well, I will see thy face no more. This is where 11 goes in. And the Lord said unto Moses, Pharaoh shall not hearken unto you. And my wonders... For who? For Israel may be multiplied in the land of Egypt. And Moses there did all these wonders before Pharaoh. And the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart so that he would not let the children of Israel go out of his land. You see, Israel can't walk out on their own in the world. I cannot step out of the world without Jesus Christ. I need God. I need a prophet likened unto Moses. That's that prophet. 